Huge congratulations on the movie. I Thank you. can't Thank you. express how much I loved it. Thank you. Um, Ben, first question for you. Obviously, I want to talk a little bit about incorporating Michael Jordan in the movie, especially because I really loved how you approached that. Was there any workshopping or trial and error in the writing and development phase to figure out the right way to do that? Or is what we see in the final film the plan since day one? The fact that he was not in it is definitely the plan from day one because I just think he's too big and meaningful and famous and and grand to ever have the audience believe uh, that somebody else was him, especially given that he, he doesn't have the whole, an actor wouldn't have the whole movie to try to flesh it out. Like, you know, I've seen it done, uh, you know, Denzel did it with Malcolm X, you know, that thing where at the end of the movie, you're, you're surprised that Ma- the real Malcolm X, we see the clip, doesn't look like Denzel. But that just, that opportunity wasn't, wasn't available and I thought it would undermine the movie. And also it's not... It's really, I didn't want to, to, to tax Michael's, use Michael's image in that way, but I really tell a story, a kind of a fable about the people around him. And, uh, you know, he just was, it's a story about the people who, 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 who are around somebody who's great and who means that much to the world. And I felt like it was kind of more interesting and more effective if all the things that, that we remember about him and that we have in our memories, we bring to it and imagine, because the imagination is, is more powerful than anything you can do as a filmmaker. What you said in the in your director statement was perfect. Air is not Michael Jordan's story, but there is no story without him. And you feel it the way you incorporated him. I was so impressed by that. Chris, for you, we only get to spend so much time with Howard in the movie, but I know that you knew him and you also spoke to a whole lot of people who know him well as well. So is there any like little detail that maybe we don't see or hear about in the final film, but we can feel informing your performance in the movie? Uh, no, I think it was, I tried to get it all all in those scenes I was in, and it was you know it was like kismic. You know, this role was meant for me. Me and Howard, you know, I, I, I similar. I could pull from him. I like you know his personality. He's a really nice guy, kind guy, and yeah, of course he had me talk to so many people, and I, I tried to get his dialect down and try to get his his kind heartedness. You know, Charles Barkley would tell me stories about how he he uh, mentored him and so many other uh, athletes. So yeah, I, th- I think I tried to get. I think we got it all in there. But he has a life story coming, so I know he'll get way more than that coming soon. <laughs> yeah, I, ha- I had heard you talk about that in another interview. I'd be really curious to see more of his story. It's yes. an, incre- an incredible life. Actually, yes. this is just a one little sliver of who Howard White was. He's an extraordinary yeah. guy in life. You get to make more. I will be here to watch it. I have a little bit of a big serious question for you guys because I just loved seeing someone choose deep, authentic passion over what one might deem the smarter business move in this movie. So over the course of your careers, can you give me an example of a time when someone else recognized your vision, passion and heart over business and financial value? And you made something special because someone else believed in you and gave you a shot. Oh, boy. I mean, like for me, there's two kind of defining moments. <clears throat> One was when, um, you know, we were sold Good Will Hunting as a script, and, and everybody tried to get us off of it as actors. You know, wanted to get rid of us. And and uh, Castle Rock initially, Liz Glotzer and, and and Rob Reiner and that company, Alan Horn, uh, Marty Schaefer, they bought it and they they allowed us to attach us as actors, and that that really changed everything. Of course, Robin and Gus. You know, going along with that made a big deal, and and then and then there was really the you know I I have to say Amazon and in this deal recognizing you know our equity and our company and and kind of acknowledging and allowing us to take the approach that we want to take and give ourselves a chance to sort of prove this model was very very meaningful because we wouldn't have been able to do it uh, had they not been been open to that and uh, so you know this we had to bear out but I, but I felt that it was a a very very big risk and a big deal and I and I hope that um, it really pays off. Yeah, and I think it's uh you know like my might be like something like Def Comedy Jam when, uh, you know, the producer saying, I want you, you know, I only had a certain amount of time, you know, in my act, but I want you to, to be on this show. And uh, it was a really hot series on uh, on HBO and they gave me a shot to, uh, to do my thing. And uh, it, it uh, really uh, helped out my career, I think. I love hearing it. I love this movie. I also love your initiative with Artist Equity. I can't wait to see everything else you make under that banner. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you very Thank much. You.